Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the VTuber News. I hope you guys enjoy what I have in store for you. Let's get right into it. Yago, the GOAT, is making some statements here. They made a statement based on, if you remember, what I ended up talking about a while back last week, on Friday or so, or whenever it was, um, I ended up making a post about Hololife and Cover being hit with an advisory, a warning uh, about the Subcontract Act Sincerely apologize to our fans, creators, and business partners for the concern and inconvenience caused by the Subcontract Act recommendation. We have received various opinions from you all, and we will take the recommendation seriously and work hard to make corrections and prevent recurrence. Instead of trying to hide it, instead of trying to hide it, they are actually doing something to make things better. And that is the way things should always be. It should always be this way, where you try to make things better, not make it worse, not have, you know, bad situations happen and things like that. Uh, clean and straightforward, not the sloppy toppy approach like Kurosanji. Absolutely nobody to blame but himself and his management. That's why he said what he said. He took responsibility, as Yago always does. He always takes responsibility for the things he does and the things he says, because that is good leadership, leading by example. And like Riku blaming everyone but himself and his management. That's why he's the GOAT. Uh, Yago willing to kneel and bow to, to his fans, you know, bow in apology, not bow as in like being subservient. Only Yago does that. Only further to make him respectable in return because he learns so much and is and learns very well. Same thing happened with the China incident a while back. They've learned what they their lesson. They've learned the mistakes that they've made and they've gotten it better. They've gotten it better slowly. Thank God Yago is the man behind Hololive. Sister may celebrate this rare cover L, preaching doom and gloom that would be fall cover, as they always have. And this law comes into effect on November 1st, which is the subcontract law. It's coming into effect. It's a new law that will make it uh, much more difficult for agencies like Hololive and Nidhi Sanji to request more work from a subcontractor without paying them first, or at least putting it into the contract that they will be paid for this extra work. This is going to happen to Nidhi Sanji hard as well. Any color was lucky that the artist's outrage during Selene's termination was solved entirely by Selene's bank account. That luck will run out one day and any color will have to no cash reserve to pay the artist or will just decide not to. It is not only large agencies like Hololive that have run into this issue though. If you remember also about a month ago or so, I got on Idol EN's case for what they did with artists not getting paid on time. Of course, you had to have people like Rin Penrose and other agency people, managers, etc., trying to get up to the upper management, the, the people in the, uh, the position to actually pay these things off, to actually pay it off. So I don't just criticize big agencies like this. I criticize any agency that has this. It's not easy being an agency, but they're out there, so I criticize. About the New Japan law, about delayed payment for companies a while ago, and cover basically got placed as an example for the new law, correct? Yeah, they got placed as an example since they're large. It wasn't a fine. It wasn't a, hey, you broke the law. You're going to go to court. It was like, hey, you've done these things. It's going to be bad against this law that's going to come into effect on November 1st. Fix this before it becomes law. And then you're going to get, you're going to get, you know, bad stuff happen. So, yeah, a uh, law and what ministry body who handling said just cover to pay what they did two years ago. Law was not fully implemented and they called out cover in their stock market bulleting for something, you know, basically threatening them, smearing company's name, if not complying. So cover with zero argument, paid it back and did everything right. They still did the right thing. Very happy about that. Nothing to complain there. Hollow Live is known for getting perms for a lot of different music, mostly Japanese music because they are a Japanese agency, but they are getting Western music perms, it seems as well. Who is the person that's getting it? It seems like Elizabeth Roseblood wanted some fun. Hear ye, hear ye. Announcement, I'm beyond thrilled and deeply honored to announce that I'll be releasing Western covers on major music platforms like Spotify. This is insane. This isn't just, oh, I'm going to be doing a cover. Oh, I'm going to be singing the song. It is actually doing a cover and having it be able to be uh, released on Western areas like Spotify and other music areas. This is amazing for anybody. The release is Wednesday, 30th of October, 9 a.m. GMT. Worldwide release on Spotify. 30th of October, midnight release on non-Spotify platforms in respective time zones. The, player, the areas that Blackbird is going to be released is a Spotify so far. It's going to be YouTube, Spotify, and of course, uh, Apple Music as well, from what it looks like. And here's going a little bit into it. Uh, this has been awesome. I did an announcement post now for the time of report. Western cover will be released on the 30th of October. Liz has made it possible to have Western English covers and more music expansion. There will be a movie watch along, a music show, the main season, plus two more rebroadcasts covering all time zones and rabbit on the full of timetable will be released right here. Of course, you'll have the different things here. She says uh, the Blackboard, Blackbird cover is going to be released, of course. And she says movie watch alongs 
are going to be Monday, October 28th, and it's going to be 1 p.m. ET, 8 p.m. GMT. It may have already happened by the time you watch this this uh, specific little video section that I have here, uh, but those are the times. You can take a look at that. You can also see uh, Unarchived Music Show is the same thing Wednesday, October 30th. Uh, if that has already happened, then, of course, you can take a look at the rebroadcasts that are going to happen because she's going to rebroadcast the Unarchived Music Show because it's going to be unarchived, but she's going to be able to rebroadcast again Thursday the 31st at 7 p.m. And Thursday the 31st at 3 a.m., PDT is going to be the Unarchived Music Show tribute to the 60s. She uh, she rebroadcasts a lot of these things all the time. She's done that every single time she has an unarchived karaoke or an unarchived music thing or an unarchived watch along or anything like that she rebroadcasts it she says she she does it to milk to milk the audience stuff no, but she does it kind of because she wants people to be able to catch it because sometimes the time zone just doesn't match or the day just doesn't match you're busy etc she wants to be able to have you guys see it it's hard to overstate what a big deal this actually is she got the rights to make an and distribute a professionally produced cover of a western mainstream song and the plan is explicitly to do more of these Cover committing to that successfully getting the rights to do it on the terms that are favorable enough to justify it is big. The girls all work hard and have big dreams, and don't get me wrong, but yo, ERB, when she told us about her dream and goal, she wasn't kidding. Cover willing to do that for her is a big, massive W. They didn't have to. Remember, there's another agency that com that directly competes with uh, Hololife that doesn't do that to for their for their agency talents it, this is actually huge the beatles are under sony music and notoriously hard to get the rights for their songs in general wonder how the management to pull this off because yes blackbird it is the british you know the english uh group the beatles and they are feverishly hard they're like extremely hard they're like really 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 aggressive with protecting their rights and it to, in order to be able to do that cover and get it to be favorable for her is humongous. Mika and Echo is, of course, a very divisive figure. Divisive by divisive, I mean it splits people right in half. If you didn't know what divisive means, that's what it means. It splits people right in half. You're either for or against her. Uh, very few people are right in the middle. I'm kind of right in the middle, though. Um, I empathize with a lot of situations that she's going through because I have severe depression. I have, like, persistent depressive disorder, whatever it's called. Severe anxiety, both social and just general anxiety. Uh, you know... I, I, I'm getting treated for those things, but it can create extreme reactions to very, very small stimuli, very small thing. And that's what she's been having for the longest time. And, uh, you know, recently she had her situation with Mafu Mafu that she went through, and then she decided to take a bit of a break uh, from streaming and things like that. And now she's trying to post more positive things, as you can see here. Mika Neko's wish for the online world. Let me actually give you the post here, which is posted here. I hope online world will become a more peaceful place. Neither the activists nor the viewers are here to be unhappy. I think we all share the same desire to have fun. That's why we're all here. I agree with you. Let's all be happy together. I've grown so much in, in my way of thinking and calmness from all the painful experiences I've had online. So thank you. And of course, people responded by saying that... If it ends with just painful experience, I'm sure it'll be frustrating. Let's turn it into our own strength. And Mika Neko responds to that. Yes, thank you for your kind words. Of course, you know, people are going to be supporting her, which I'm very happy for. People are also going to be going against her. Because I'm sure there are people. I hope Mika Neko finds happiness online too. And of course, she's thanking people for their kind words. If you have someone here who I've been through some really tough times recently, so I want to emulate Mika Neko's strength. I want to spend my days laughing and doing things I love. And here she responds. I want to hear her response for this. It took me a long time to be able to think like this. And I've fallen into darkness before. As we've seen, as I've come Covered. So you don't have to force yourself to be strong. People who get torn apart a lot and then shine a lot have a richer life. Take your time. And then the person responds with, that's right. I'll try my best to move forward little by little. So she's actually doing something very positive. And yes, you can call me a drama merchant. You can call me someone who only goes after the negative. But I like to see the positive because if there's no positive in life, then holy crap, we're living in a very drab world. And I don't want to believe that. Yes, of course, like I said, I will still point out the things that have been done in the past. Mika Neko has done a lot in the negative stuff. And, uh, you know, honestly agree. I tend to watch streamers for the moment of relief from IRL stress. Hope she, this is sincere and she's gotten professional help for her mental health. It's like when you're looking at dating profile and they talk about hating drama and then you go out on a couple of dates with them and you find out they love drama. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I hope she's gotten some help. Get some help. To be honest, it's not like her therapy is our business. So I doubt we'll get details. Of course, it's her personal business. I just mentioned my therapy and my stuff because... It relates to the story that I'm talking about. Why did I write streamers like that? I wrote it on paint because the translator translated Katsu as activists. 
I guess most literal translation is those who do activities. Uh, you can think of it as content creators, understanding there's uh, those who do classic content, write books, films, and others seem like myself, but just do other content. But yeah, people here are saying, you know, it's sad. No doubt she isn't absolutely a good person. I don't think she deserved to be dragged through the mud like this. Like I said, I have a big, big feeling that a lot of the things that Mickey Neko has done, a lot of the reactions that she's had is because of, of mental illness. Just like I, I have extreme anxieties. I have, you know, like I said, uh, mass, major depressive disorder. I have things like that, that what they do, the reason why I mention it, not for pity or anything like that, but I mention it to give you guys an idea. That is what causes these things, these extreme reactions. You'll have a small little thing here and it'll cause an extreme reaction because of your anxiety shoots up to 11, which mine does all the freaking time. And it just makes you overreact to everything. And that is bad. I, I have reined that in myself. And I'm glad that Mika Neko is reining it in, but that's why I have some understanding as a human being that goes through the same stuff that she's gone. And I'm glad, like, her case with Mafu Mafu had a lot of he said, she said, set out of court. So I don't think people should harass her to the point where she's internet jester, forced to dance for the internet's whim. And, you know, people calling her a, a um, law cow, they're just, you know, causing more issues. People that rail on her causing more issues. But of course, she is a public figure, so she can't prevent that. And there's nothing you can do when you're a public figure. You're open to criticism, open to people making fun of you, open to all that kind of stuff. And it's sad, but Niji Sanji has their music festival every year. Uh, as it's the same way that, you know, Hollow Life has their Hollow Fest. Niji Sanji has their Niji Fest or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it looks like after the concert cancellation fiasco, they disallow fans from Japan to buy tickets. Niji Sanji Music Festival 2024 ticket sales. Viewers outside of Japan can also enjoy this year's event. Tickets are now available at StageCrowd, um, International StageCrowd Live NMF 2024. From October 28th to January 5th, JST, tickets not available to viewers residing in Japan. So this is a music festival happening in, the in I guess, outside of Japan in this case. I think it's the U.S., uh, or uh, where is it exactly? It shows, it all shows in Japanese, but it's interesting. Uh, they're having their Niji Fest. Um, it's really strange. Time to never buy. They went want forgiveness, just like the case of Colleen Ballinger and Ukulele Girl. Since E Luna will be appearing in 2D, it seems that the 3D debuts temporarily stopped at Uki. There'll probably be a month or two break between them. There was between Luxem and Noctix. Uh, I don't know since Didi's main HQ is JP. The sentence confuses me. Exactly. This is in Japan, I think. Maybe. Tickets not available to re viewers residing, not residing in Japan. It has to be not residing in Japan. Because this this seems like something that is for people in Japan. At least, usually, it's a Japanese festival. Usually, it's like Hollow Fest, where it's in Japan. Uh, Like, even says additional insight still won't help being puzzled about Riku and Ko's decision. Probably have a deal with Aeon Cinemas to exclusively show live viewings. Probably said on BD after something like that. Don't think you're quite right there. Think the case of JP fans have to buy tickets to the event. Can't buy live viewing tickets. Still an issue with Nico Nico or something, or is it something? Oh, okay. So it might be live viewing tickets. That makes a little bit more sense. Like streaming tickets may not be able to be purchased by people in Japan. Uh, but of course, going to Niji Fest, because if it's if it's like Hollow Fest and it's in Japan, which I usually think it is, it makes it doesn't make any sense for them not to allow any uh Japanese people there. My guess is the live viewing tickets are the big issue. That is my guess at least. So um it's a fully streaming one, not a concert, just Japanese talents participating in it. Why does this allow their own from purchasing it? I don't know. Check the tickets to confirm. Also, unlike Niji Sanji Music Festival, there don't appear to be a physical concert this year. So let's see um, about everything here. And uh, let's see. JP fans can purchase the ticket on Nico Nico. Oh, so they do allow purchasing of tickets on Nico Nico. Okay. So that is that is a weird thing, honestly. It's a very, very strange app. Uh, it's saying here, Niji Sanji EN, 2D, etc., etc. So yeah. They're having, they're having their stuff. Uh, it's going to be a 2D style concert. It's an anything new. Stage crowd tickets are meant for overseas viewers, while JP fans watch through Nico Nico. Online ticket sales available later date. Oh, okay. So stage crowd is not available to JP residents, but Nico Nico, you can. So that was the weirdness about it. That's just that confusing. It's like JP, they should say JP fans uh, are not available to JP fans. JP fans buy here type of thing. Would have been a good idea to have there, at least in the explanation in their um their twit their Twitter post their X post or whatever, you know they should have put something like that you know out there to make it a little bit easier to understand. I usually don't cover IRL stuff from VTubers, but this is on their official channel. This is on their official thing, so this is something that they themselves are fine with having out there. So I'll have it out there myself. Uh, watching Hidime Hajime doing an IRL stream is a surreal experience. Bringing this up because the subreddit often talks about past live identities of corporal VTubers. In this case, Hima is a VTuber with V Shoujo, but literally every single viewer knows only not only her real name, 
and what she looks like, but most regularly enjoy her undisguised IRL content on another YouTube channel. This kayfabe dialed all the way up to 11. Also note the presence of Demon Dice, Karen, uh, plus Pete shouldn't do pumpkin carving with long sleeves. Uh, Hima being Sydney is like the most super obvious that it becomes basically an inside joke that people have fun nowadays. Clearly almost everyone knows this and she isn't even trying to hide it. Seriously, it makes you wonder why her grandma did not stream instead. That wig though, lols. So that mean that she will see an IRL booby stream sometime or bubby, a bubby? We'll never see Bubby and Chris in the same room, just saying, and sarcasm. To me, it's just the same as Kason. Yeah, Kason doesn't really care as well as on Vishojo about showing a real face. She's shown a real face before. She's had it before and she's continuing with Vishojo. It's kind of like you're seeing the IRL persona in the IRL time and you're seeing the Kason, you know, VTuber persona separately. So what is this all about? It's about this thing that they had here. And of course, uh, the people who do not want to actually be seen are like their, their faces be known are actually uh you know not showing their faces etc and then you have you know Hima Hajime showing their face and things like that so this is not like oh my god I'm doxing somebody this is actually on their channel Hajime 11 hours ago 151k followers so it's not a fake channel it's late spooky game sesh with heart rate monitor Hime calling so this is all this stuff because she feels comfortable enough and I'm very happy that she feels comfortable enough to actually do these things and actually have it out there with friends and have fun and I'm glad she's friends with Demon Dice and other people out. So this is a lot braver than myself. I'll say that right now. But it's nice to see that they are um, brave enough to do this kind of stuff. Sayu, Sayu Synchronicity, the wonderful Sayu, is having her new Halloween outfit. I love the way it looks. This is her new Halloween outfit. It's kind of like a, a ghost. Like As you know, she's a cyberpunk girl. So you're seeing here like worn down um, panels and, you know, joints worn down, uh, you know, like it, it looks like she's she's finally letting her hag self be out there. The hag, the hag bot there. The the pupils are very nice. Of course, it's like, you know, the broken top there, you know, showing as like maybe she's like a ghoul in that form and the mask as well. So like the ghoul form of her cybernetic body. It's all very, very beautifully done, very beautifully shaded. And the rigging is really, really well done. Uh, the rigging can only be this well done, of course, when you have someone who knows about layering on the, the Photoshop side, knows about layering on the art side, can layer it correctly and layer it in a way that makes it easier for the rigger to be able to move separate pieces. Like you layer the mask, you layer the, the ears, you layer everything out there. Everything gets layered along with it. And that is not easy. That takes hours and hours of work. That's her full design there. And I love the way it looks. I do love it. I love the little attention to detail. Like I said, you know, the worn out pieces and things like that. Really, really well done. And I wanted to give a shout out to that. Let's see what people are, are saying. Really leaning into a cyborg. I like it. Also playing Signalis, which basically goes in the shell, sudden horror. And I'm not going to cover it. I'm not going to do that one. Design really floored me. It's really freaking cool. Holy S, this goes hard. Oh no, exposed hips. Twitch is going to ban. Cool outfit. Really fits with her theme. And gone with two excellent choices. Sayu doesn't miss with her outfits. Every single one has been 10 out of 10. Absolutely impeccable taste. And she has really, really good mamas. Does she flap or does she clank? That's the question. Uh, oh God. People, 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 stop it. <laughs> Looks like she didn't reveal who designed this one for her since I usually artist gone corporate now. Monaco 55 is the artist and it was mentioned here before. She actually did mention it, you know, thanks to Monaco and thanks to others in her actual uh, tweet about it. She did mention it there. So she did mention and also the artist involved in it as can be seen here uh, by the person who did it. Had the chance to work in Sayu Sin. Let's go Wayu, main metal artist. And that, and of course, she loves it. She's really, really happy about that. So they have been shouted out, of course, on Twitter. This is a robot design I wanted to see developed. Not those excessively realistic faces and bodies. No one cared who I am until I put on the mask. Sayu probably. So yeah, good times for Sayu. I'm really happy that she was able to get this done. This is a lot of work to get this done. Number one, it is something that she's probably had since the beginning of the year because it takes a long time to rig these things. It's not something that can be done in a month. Something that can be done maybe in six months to a year, depending on the schedule the person has. So it's a, a basically working probably since last year, uh, since last Halloween on getting this Halloween outfit done. Hino Kumaran, a part of 774 Inc. They are, you know, the Kuma of the whole thing or the bear of the whole thing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're part of Animalia. I believe that's the name of the thing that they were a part of. And they have been, I believe, the actual first notification of it was earlier this month, like way earlier this month that I, that I covered. But they finally started their live and they are going to be doing it and, you know, have a little bit of an explanation as to everything. Their explanation of everything here is broadcast from 1928th. Hinokumaran is graduating. Waiting areas here. Finally, Nanashi-chan's graduation day has come. 
there's a whole lot of exciting things that make you feel lonely. I'm really looking forward to the project. We're going to cover some other parts of it beginning. They, are, they went through the whole thing. There are people here that are reacting, of course, to the situation. And now that YouTube has finally decided to load for me, we have them talking about other things. Their, their whole big graduation that's going to be announced. That is, you know, they're going through their chat. They wanted to have a chat with their community. They wanted to have a chat with their community about what's going to be happening, what they're thinking of doing. Um, it's not because she's on 774 Inc. I don't think it's another agency that she's going to. It's just a lot of times these uh, when you're in an agency, you want the creative freedom to create something else, as has been mentioned, you know, with with Ame, with other people. Ame actually was an affiliate, but, you know, she is more creatively free now. Anyone who leaves a large agency is more creatively free. And that is always, always a good thing for them and the community. I think in the end, it ends up being a good thing. Oh, so I don't see anything negative with them doing this. It's just, it does suck for the community. Absolutely. Because you have people who really, really wanted to see them. And now they can't because they've moved on. And that is always, like I said, always a shame. Always something sad for the Yume Desu is a vtuber that i want to showcase today so welcome back to the vtuber showcase the place where i'd like to showcase all vtubers of various sizes you just let me know and i will do my best to showcase you i appreciate you guys allowing this to happen and you guys coming and supporting it as you always have this is my way of giving something positive back with all the drama all the other random stuff that happens over here I do want to give something positive back to the community, build it up instead of tearing it down, instead of, you know, only showing the bad sides. I like to show the good sides, which are the VTubers themselves. So this is, again, Yume Desu, who is a, it appears to be a horned VTuber. So it looks like maybe a little devil, maybe a devil, maybe a half dragon. We will see. I've been there about new lore coming. Uh, according to what they have, it says, my pleasure to meet someone as lovely as you. My lore is coming soon. Please wait for me, darlings. And uh, they don't have anything much else by there. But just from the look of it, they look like um, either a demon, a, you know, humanoid dragon. Any of those things can be with the wings. The wings look um, more demon-esque. So it might be a demon. And uh, just letting you know a little bit of that. And let's see their videos and see what the content they have out there. Let's take a look at some, the most recent one. Look, Toma, I'm flattered. I don't swing that way. You're a nice guy. I'm sure you'll find someone. But that's not, I'm, that's, just, I'm just that, not very interested in you. I'm sorry. She's laughing. That's why she's silent. Um, Arata, I need to say this. Look, 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 no, 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 no. We got... It just cannot be okay. Um, it's, it's just I, what happened. Arata. Yeah. Are you gay? You gay? No. That's what I just <laughs> said. There you go. You get to hear your voice. Basically, some fun as everyone has with Lethal Company. It's always good to have that kind of company around. It's always good to have that kind of uh, you know, dynamic going off back and forth. I appreciate you. And I do hope that this helps get you some more views. Gets help you know some more views to your channels, some more views to your content. And thank you so much for letting me showcase you on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.